morning. Welcome back to the shop. Sunday morning. Getting ready for some playoff football. Um, I had a question asked on YouTube from my friend Harry Voss. When I was doing the review of the Diamond Stone Diamond Plate um, about what I do with an iron, I had made a comment that, um, that it cuts so fast. And the results of that video, if you haven't watched that video, uh, look back at it. And um, the results of the cutting, what I do, what do I do with an iron when it's severely damaged? Um, and the answer to that question is pretty simple. I grind it. Uh, I think that grinding is essential to um, being able to sharpen tools in the shop. Everything from lathe tools to um, single point cutting tools for the, the lathe. Um, lathe tools uh, for turning wood to plain irons to chisels um, drill bits axes you name it uh, grinding is essential to being efficient at sharpening tools and keeping your sharpening time both accurate and efficient so what I do with my plain irons is um, I grind them and then use them and use them and use them until the grind is basically gone. And then what, it, what eventually happens is that they turn into a concave bevel and then sharpening becomes a little bit more complicated and you, typically people just go to a micro bevel and um, Grinding is a much more efficient way to keep your angles, but to understand grinding and angles, you have to understand what the angles are doing first. And the biggest difference in plain irons, um, single point cutting tools, and I'll get you a close up in a second, um, lathe tools, the whole nine yards, is to understand the difference between rake angle and clearance angle. On, I'm going to get you zoomed in a little bit closer here and talk about that in a second here, especially when I'm checking out this iron for what's on it. Um, on a bevel down plane like um, this Bailey Patton Shelton, the angle that's ground on this, commonly called a bevel, we call it a bevel, uh, or in woodworking, call it a bevel. In machine tools um, and single point cutting on the lathe, it's called the clearance angle. And that's all it is. This angle that's uh, ground on this bevel is only there for clearance. That's it. It doesn't affect cutting pressure. It doesn't affect finish. Um, all, it, all it does is clear the wood as this is pushed across it. So in other words, um, as it's presented to the piece, let's just do this, we're going to have to change the camera real quick. But as it's presented to the piece at 45 degrees in the plane, the back of the iron, the heel of this bevel, the heel of this relief angle, has to be higher than the workpiece. And that's it. That's all it has to be. So essentially in a bevel down plane, this angle has to be less than 45 degrees. And so that we don't get into depth of cut and rubbing, rubbing issues and, and parallax and all other kinds of things on shear cuts uh, and a shearing cut where your planes to the side. And um, let's just say it has to be less than 40. Um, and that's all it has to be. It does affect also edge retention as well. And this is where we get into 25s and 30s and all those kinds of things. So what has been found in woodworking, unless you're into 
David's unicorn method, which if you're not, then you should look up David W. on YouTube and look at the unicorn method. And if you want to search into woodworking, uh, there's been written up in a bunch of woodworking articles lately, the unicorn method, which is a new method in sharpening. But for sake of everyday life, if you're watching this, you probably struggle with sharpening and you're trying to understand it better. So let's go basic sharpening single bevels i want my plane iron to cut when it gets pushed across the wood and i want it to be pleasant um, one other thing about working with wood is sharper your tools are the better your your understanding and your bevels are the more pleasant that it is especially uh with wood turning the better that you get your tools set up the more pleasant wood turning is same thing with planing so with 25 and 30, what happens is your, maybe I should explain this better when you get, when I get you up close, but the metal behind this edge is thicker at 30 degrees than it is at uh, 25. And this one I assume is around 25 right now. And as this gets pushed into very difficult wood knots and stuff like that, if that's very thin, that this edge will actually roll over. And instead of being destroyed, it will just roll over and it won't cut very well. It'll probably still cut, but it won't cut very well. And you'll have to push hard and it'll feel like crap. So as we get out to 30, that edge becomes more durable. And we don't want to go above 40. So we get into a discussion about freehand sharpening, which I would suggest anyone do. And um, even if you struggle with it at first, Freehand sharpening is absolutely, in my mind, the way to go and the way you should all do it. Um, in freehand sharpening, what's going to end up happening is if you go out to 30 or 35 and you don't pay attention and now you start to put micro bevels on, you could end up in a situation where you get up above 40 and get into rubbing issues on the wood as it goes across where it doesn't cut. So 25 is safe, especially if you use micro bevels. 30 is probably better in a bevel down. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to check this iron. We're going to check it for square. We're going to grind it. We're going to sharpen it. We're going to make some cuts. And uh, I think just with this discussion, this video is going to get long. So just be prepared for that. If you don't want to watch a long video, then start fast forwarding. Um, in a bevel up plane, like this long angle jack plane, this is not a clearance angle. This is a rake angle. A rake angle not only affects edge durability somewhat, not very much, but it does affect edge durability a little bit. This does affect cutting pressure. The steeper that angle gets, the more cutting pressure you have, the harder it's going to be to push through the wood. It does affect um, chip management and chip breaking. In the bevel down, we have a chip breaker to do that. This one affects chip management. It affects surface finish. It affects surface pressure and how much it takes to push across the wood, and it does affect edge durability. In a bevel up plane, this angle is much more critical to what you want it to do than in a bevel down. In a bevel down, the angle almost is regardless as long as it's between 25 and 40. Um, we're not going to talk, I mean, we're not going to do a bevel up right now, especially because this is sharp. We're going to do a bevel down, and this is more about grinding and getting it square and taking it uh, to the stones because I think in woodworking grinding bevels has become a almost a taboo subject. People think that you should never go to a grinder and it's, uh, it's absolutely the opposite of the truth. You should absolutely should go to a grinder. It's faster. Um, you can set your bevel angle with much less headache. Um, you can cut down your sharpening times because you're removing stuff that you don't need in the bevel, which is the whole middle, the whole back half of this bevel you just don't need. Um, 
you're only cutting on the very, very tip. That's all that matters. And it's hard to get that across to people, but it's true. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom you in on the bench here. And we're going to take a look at this bevel for what angle it is. It hasn't been ground in some time. You can actually still see there's a little bit of a grinding mark over here. I probably do this one freehand. We're going to set up the grinder for the right angle. Uh, to make this, we're going to grind it, sharpen it, take some cuts. Um, we're going to also address how square this edge is. We're going to make sure it's square. So I'm actually going to blunt this before I sharpen it. And then you'll see how long it takes to sharpen it. So this is going to get a little bit long. But I'm going to zoom in on the bench here while I check this out. Probably just do some more jibber-jabber about angles, rake angles, and um, clearance angles. And these principles apply across um, all kinds of tools from chainsaw chains to chisels to you name it. But uh, yeah, let me get you uh, looking down at the bench here. This way you don't have to see my face. Well, hopefully I'll keep everything right in front of you so you can see what I'm looking at. Then I'll get you set up at the grinder and we'll talk about the grinder. So, um, first thing we have to do is find out if this bevel's square. Okay, so we're going to simply check it with a square. Get some sort of background that you can see. Hopefully I'm holding it. I'll hold this. Let me see how high my field of view is there. Okay, so let's say I don't want to go higher than the strop here. But, um, all right, so number one. This bevel's really, really square. So I'm not, I'm actually not, I'm going to grind a flat on it just for the hell of it, just so you can see it. But uh, there's no reason uh, really to try to square that up. It's very, very, very square. And it's probably that way because of the last time I ground it, I made it that way. So I am going to grind a flat on this because I don't want to um, have it influence the sharpening. Or I'll just take it over a stone and dull it so that you can see what dull to sharp, how long it takes to go from dull to sharp. I'm really dull to sharp. Um, so here we have, let's hold it this way just for the sake of that's how it's in the plane. This clearance angle, um, as this plane planes across the wood, has to clear the wood. The cutting edge is the only thing cutting the wood and the this rake angle is set at 45 degrees unless it's a tapered iron and then it's somewhere right around 45 but not quite but um, actually would be yeah a little less than 45 because of the, the taper on the iron but we have to keep this bevel angle somewhere between 25 and 40 now because they end up becoming concave and we end up putting a micro bevel like there is on this one and this one I did sharpen in the video the other night so the micro bevel got big on that new, that new plate. Let's check it out, see where it is. I assume it's somewhere around 25. Uh, you do that simply with an angle finder. And if I have to kind of, I'm going to try and stay in your field of view, but Get this All right, so it's about. Oh, sorry, just trying to look across it somewhere so that I'm touching in the middle because it has become a little bit concave. I don't know if you, I mean con yeah convex. Sorry, I don't know if you can see that. Did I, if I use concave wrong earlier, I apologize. But this bevel has become a little bit convex. It's a little high in the middle. Uh, I don't know if you, it shows up good in the camera, but it's low on the top and low towards the edge. But I got it set pretty much in the middle, and right now this one is at 27 degrees. So we can see that. This bevel's at 27, which is, you know, um, pretty okay. It, it doesn't matter what it is as long as, like I said, it's between 25 and 40. 27 is probably pretty good with the micro bevel. That micro bevel probably puts it closer to 30 in the middle. But what we're going to do is we're going to make, we're going to black this bevel out. And it's important to black it out to the edge. Get 
and I'm going to angle you up just so you can see what I'm going to do here. I'm going to dull this bevel. And then what we want to do is we want to black that dull edge. And it's important to grinding because we want to see as we get closer and closer to the edge. What happens with grinding is when we grind this out and hollow grind it, when we go to the stone, the stones or the plates, you're only hitting on the heel of the bevel here and the cutting edge. And it makes sharpening very, very fast. You're not touching in the middle. So you're just addressing the edge. It makes it easy to register and you sharpen the edge very, very quickly, much faster than you would doing this um, convex bevel right now because you'd be all over the place from sharpening back here where it's not necessary. And then sometimes you'd hit down here and back and forth trying to pull a burr and you wouldn't understand why. It's because your bevel becomes so convex that it rocks on the plate and you're never addressing the edge. But when you grind it and you take the middle out of the equation, you're just hitting on the edge and you're just hitting on the heel and it makes it much, much faster. Um, there is a point where if this was a super, super thick iron like this and you had a huge concave in it from the wheel, you would be thinning out the edge a little bit. So it's probably, you know, we'll keep it closer to 30 would be good. And we'll show you how you do that. I'm going to give you a better view. I'm going to just kind of pan you up so you can see the stones because so you can watch me blunt this. And if I could put timestamps in here, it'd be like, well, here's unnecessary stuff and here's necessary stuff. So I'm going to blunt the edge real quick. Let's take it to a plate. So I'm going to groove in one of my stones and we're going to run this across on this plate vertical i should see in the light yep if i get the light right i could show you that but now let's see where you're looking here let's see if i could get the light right so i could show you that i don't know how this is going to focus here which end of the camera so this is the end of the camera which you can see the um, little bright line across there all right this is now dull okay I run my finger on it like this so I'm sure you I'm, I got pressure on it it's dull all the way across completely dull not cutting my finger okay I'm pushing on it uh, make sure you can see I'm pushing on it okay dull so what we're going to do is we're going to grind this sharpen it and then plane with it show you how long it takes to do that and because I'm going to do some explanation in here it's going to take longer than normal but you'll be able to get the gist of it and where do I want you for the grinder let's get you over here this grinder I've uh, actually made, but you could do it on, I can show you this, sorry for this, but I can do it on that freehand in about two seconds, I used to. Um, I'm going to actually set up the rest to try to take some of the scariness out of this for some of you, because some people are just going to think this is so scary to grind something. Uh, I'm going to use the rest, show you how to use the rest, but I would advise you that the faster get my coffee over here the faster you can learn how to do this freehand the better i could freehand this on this wheel right now I'd, I'd actually i'd move the rest over so that i have something to rest my hand on but i could freehand this across here we're going to do it because not everybody has a cdm wheel we're going to do it on just the course wheel here i'm going to dress the course wheel real quick in there. Now actually mine, I've got a groove across it, so I'm just going to dress it by eye. Because it's going to grab the dresser on the way across. Probably just do it like this. 
still kind of falls into there, but I'll just do it with my hand. So we're going to just dress the wheel real quick. It's a nice old Veritas dresser. It was very uneven, but I use it a lot now because I'm getting it down to usable again. So now what we're going to do is we're going to set the grinder up so that we can grind this at 30 degrees. Looks like my dress is pretty square. And um, anytime that you're using a grinder, you want to set your standoff in the wheel as close as you can get it. It's just safer to do it that way. Um, I assume we're all adults here and we don't have to talk a whole lot about eye protection and um, PPE and stuff like that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to eyeball where I'm hitting the wheel. Uh, right now, obviously, we're not, not even close to an up angle. Um, we're going to try to not let myself get dyslexic here on how to loosen things up. Get myself kind of close by eye. That's kind of close by eye, so I'm just going to tighten this down. And what we're going to want to do is just very lightly bump this into the wheel while I'm pulling out by hand. See where it's touching. All right, so right now, it's touching up towards the heel. So if I ground this like this, it would decrease my angle down below 25. Okay, so this would grind, you know, closer to, let's just guess, 20 degrees if I did this. It would make the bevel, it would make it um, a much more shallow angle. And we want to get that down a little bit. We're going to see if we can do it at this relief. Make sure everything's tight. I'm going to try it again. Let's pick a different spot. That's why I blacked the bevel out. We're going to check it right here. So now grinding much closer to the center of the bevel. You should have an equal amount of black behind that and in front of that. It's very, very close. I can go down just a hair more. So I'm going to just loosen this off just a bit. Teeny bit more tap. Check it again in a different spot. Better for you to check it. Now you can, like I said, this is not critical because it only needs to be between 40 and 25. Now we're, you can see that pattern. We're pretty much right in the middle of the bevel. That's really where we want to do it. Um, it's a tad bit closer to the cutting edge. If I had to guess, it's really close. So we're going to go with that. Um, I am going to do this. Should I run for water? Do I have any water here already? I'm going to do this without water. Um, you should keep a thing of water here, but I'm going to do it barehanded. It's important for heat management. This should not get too hot for me to hold on to. If it does start to get hot, I will dip it in the water. Matter of fact, I'll just dip it in where my sharpening stones are. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and grind this real quick. It doesn't take very long. I could use the CBM wheel and really keep the heat down, but not a lot of people are going to have one. So let's just go. You want to use the coarsest wheel that you have in your shop. That's what you want to grind it on. So we want to keep kind of even pressure. Let's make a pass for us. And seal that hit. Right across the middle pretty much. And then you know, maybe a tad bit closer to the two logs and cutting edge, but not a big deal. So 
see the progress we're making. Now, as we get close to, as long as you have a coarse wheel, you'll really keep your heat down. And if you keep your wheel dressed so that it's nice open pores, you'll really keep the heat down. You can see, I hope, I hope this is showing up, um, how nice and uniform and um, not very coarse that that grind is. And what we want to do is we want to, as we get very, very close to the edge, we want to start keeping our pressure down. We don't really want to, we don't want to blue the edge or anything, but on a high speed steel blank like this, you'd never destroy the temper. That's a myth. You're not going to destroy the temper on this unless you get it red hot. You'd never be able to hold on to this with your hands and destroy the temper on that edge, period. Um, so as far as burning up the edge, it's not true. It doesn't happen. You couldn't do it. You see the progress is pretty fast. We're getting close to the edge now. We make sure we make sure that we're looking at the wheel. Yep. Uh, you can see we still got a thin black line there. Still got a pretty thin black line. As that line disappears, as that line disappears we're going to have to start dealing with that flat that I put on there, which is not very big on this right now, so it's not going to take much. Sure. Now you can see I'm holding on to it. This is not getting hot. Still got a teeny, teeny little bit of black there. Teeny little bit, I'll get you close up. I'm starting to see some sparks come across the top, which means I'm getting very, very close to that flat. You see a teeny little bit of black, not much. You see there's no black here. It's kind of because I've nicked it funny on the edge. But getting real close. Now unless you get a microscope out, unless you get a microscope out or some sort of way to enhance your view here, um, the, the black's pretty much gone. This could go right to the stones right now, but to cut your time down, if you have to grind this square, grind out a chip, anything like that, to cut your time down, you're gonna wanna black that flat spot, and you're gonna wanna make that almost disappear. That'll cut your time down on the stones. So if you can see that now, I hope that shows up. I blackened out the flat spot that I put on this when I dulled it. And now what I want to do is I want to grind until in the light that black is almost gone. So if I had to grind out a chip and I ground this flat until the chip was gone and square, and that was really big, let's say it was the thickness of the iron, you want to keep going until that black flat is almost gone. And not to sharp. You can go to sharp, especially if you keep the heat down like this. I mean, don't know what to say about heat. It's just a myth unless you go at it like an idiot. But we're going to grind that flat until it's almost gone. So if I get it in the sunlight right, I can see the flat, and you still see it's 
a millimeter or so. Again, I'm holding on to it. This is not hot. Okay. Now, I don't know if you can see it, but I'm starting to get sparks across over the top. That black line is almost gone. It's almost imperceptible right now. If I catch the light just right, I can still see it. I'm going to go a little further. Okay, I'm starting to lose the flat on the side right here, and that's because um, we cambled the irons a little bit, so we're going to lose the flats on the side first. And um, I still get a teeny little bit in the middle, I'm just going to go one more swipe. And you can see we're, we're hitting the top there and the bottom perfect now. You can see there's a little bit of black left there, so this is, we hit this pretty much right in the middle. start to get a burr on the back of the iron as you get close and again this is not hot okay showing up here not hot that's what my double looks like hopefully that's in focus let's try to get something to focus on but I'll get the light right and how it shows up but This is really close enough. Um, just feeling for a burr. So I've got a little bit of a burr here, which means I get all the way to the edge on the corner right here. I uh, don't have a burr in the middle. I can see in the, in the sunlight a teeny, 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 teeny microscopic line right directly on the edge where it's still flat. Uh, I can still run my finger on it. Wouldn't want to run my finger out here. This is pretty. You can see that's. To the edge right there. You can see it pulling my fingernail off. You can see it doesn't do it here. It does do it right on this edge. And that's because of the camber on the iron. So we are to the edge here. We are to the edge here. We're not in the middle. Okay, so this is a good spot to start to go to the stones. So uh, I hope this shows up right. You know, it's nice um, if you want to be taken seriously in things to make it look neat. This is very neat, very square. Um, one single bevel all the way across. If I did it by hand, it wouldn't look that neat, but it would still be functional. We're just taking the middle metal out is all this function does. So let me get you moved over by the stones and we'll sharpen this up and then we'll come throw it back in the plane and see if I cut my time down. Let's get you over the stones. Sorry, I got my tr new tripod here that the wife came for me. Let's get you angled down so you can see what I'm doing here. Now, the greatest part in the world about grinding is I could use anything on here right now to make this sharp. Now I'm going to use my new plate here. I did a review on this um, Duo Sharp plate. I'm going to use this real quick to pull a burr. Um, and I'll eventually go to a water stone and we'll probably just hit it on the strop real quick just to, so we get some nice shavings. Um, but we could just use this plate and go right to planing. It would be fine as long as we get the burr off. But we'll go freehand now um, as long as I'm not hitting the camera. Now, there's a million different ways you can do this, okay? So it registers great on that. 
hopefully you can see that thing stop. Um, you can do circles, you can just go straight back and straight forward, however is most comfortable for you. You can do figure eights if you want, that cuts really fast. And if it will show up, except for, I have to get the light just right, but now we're starting to pull a little line across the top and a little line across the edge, but we have to get all the way to the edge. So what I want to do is I want to make sure I take the burr off, make sure there's no burr on the back of this iron because that's going to tell us where we're at. So right now I have no burr. So we're going to go until we have a burr. This isn't going to take a ton. This is all, the time that this takes is all going to depend on how much flat spot I still have there. So, for the sake of argument, real quick, let's just do this fast. Let's go to a coarse one. We'll wipe this really quick. That, um, this Duo Sharp is actually wearing in a little. Let's go to a coarse plate and just get ourselves to the edge really fast. Now, sorry, if you want to stay square, pay attention to the polished, you know, your, your sharpened line across here. Get the light right. You can see the sharpened line. So you kind of want that to stay even. If it gets real thick on one side and thin on the other, you're going to get the iron, uh, you're going to get the cutting edge skewed, which doesn't make a huge difference. That's why we have lateral adjustments on our planes. I'm also trying to show you the best way to hold your iron that I know of, keep even pressure on it, which I'm not going to care about most of the time. Now we have a burr here. We have a burr here. I don't know if you can see it. I can actually see it. We don't quite have a burr in the middle yet, so we're just going to hog it off real quick as fast as we can here. And it's important, you start to see that growing, it's important to get to the edge on every level. You have to, to be. Big burr there. Big burr there, not quite in the middle yet. You have to get to the edge at every level. So before I leave this stone, I gotta get to the edge. Still not quite there in the middle. It's growing across from the sides. Big bar there. It's really close because it's starting to feel sharp in the middle. I can do this one hand if I want. And really, if you're doing, oh, now I get the burr in the middle. If you're doing a good job, your line at the top and the line at the bottom is going to be about the same thickness. Okay, now I have a burr all the way across. Okay, I am not going to hit the back on this because I don't want to put 300 grit scratches in the back of this plain iron. Let's just go to this one. Now, if I was doing this for work right now, 
I would just use the thousand side and just go to a 600, but which I just want to use this. This, I'm going to get rid of the burr first. This is the extra fine side of this plate. Okay, the burr's gone. Now we have to pull the burr again. I'm going to take this out of here. I don't like the uh, the holder. It's too high. So if I'm going to be critical of this uh, system plate, that holder is not going to get used. It's better height for me here. plate is starting to get worn in too. Just keep an even pressure, starting to pull the burr. I am going to feather off the sides as I go too. If you get if you if you lose yourself and not know if you're right if you're on the bevel right or a leaf angle for the purpose of this video, then stop and re-register. I get a good burr here, good burr there, good burr there, uh, teeny burr there. I'm gonna do the edges real quick, feather off the edges. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put pressure on this finger, pressure on this finger. You see, anybody who's watched Cosman, that's what he does too. A little light on my burr on this side. This side's real good. The line's real even except for a real thin spot here. I'm going to hit this edge a little more. close over there see I kind of I can tell that I hit the wheel funny over there it's gonna do that edge just a little bit more before I go to the next stone okay get a good burr all the way across Show you what that looks like. Obviously not polished, but you can see the two lines. You can see that it's all the way across. I would bet, yes, definitely. I would bet that this shaves hair right now. Oh, definitely. Okay, not very yet. Yeah, all right, so I don't know if you can see the hair on there. But um, it does shave hair not very well. I'm just going to go, we'll pick that up as we go across here. Just feeling the edge. I'm looking in the sunlight, make sure I don't see any flat spots, which I don't. Let's try. Let's see if this, this plate's any finer. This plate's been used a lot. It's obviously got some oil on it for from honing machine tools on it, too. This one does feel finer than the other plate. Cuts pretty quick, get a burr all the way across. See if it shaves. Let's 
I don't know if you can see the hair falling, but it shaves better. All right, so that's just all that hair just fell. That's just a thousand grit. This would plain fine as it is, but let's put a nice uh, finish on the edge. And I'll dry those plates off when I'm done. Let's see what's up in the box. Doesn't matter really what I use. Let's just grab this one. This is a 4,000 grit stone that actually cuts like a six. Oh, I get some hair on there. Just gonna bump around on that hair. Make sure I don't have any on here. It'll just bump around on that hair if I do. Now we're not removing metal now. All we're doing is honing the edge now. Just lapping the edge, polishing the edge, whatever you want to call it. We're not removing metal. Starting to pull burr. When I'm doing this, this is one time that I really like to go um, just uh, with one hand on it. I can kind of feather the edge a little bit better like this. I'm trying to use the whole stone too. Feels like we've got a decent burr going across there. I'm gonna feather the edges. Do not want this bevel to be straight across. 